to his teeth. Hamilton is not a happy man. That is for sure. The Monaco paddock buzzed with heat, engines, and tension. But all of that faded the moment Nico Rosberg narrowed his eyes at a monitor showing Lewis Hamilton's latest onboard lap. The crowd behind him shifted, murmuring as Rosberg paused the footage mid corner. Telemetry overlays glowed red and yellow on the screen, data no casual viewer could fully decode, but Rosberg could. His face tightened. Then, in a quiet but firm voice, he said, this isn't just bad handling. This is a structural issue. Those words cut through the noise. Within seconds, social media was on fire. Fans everywhere started asking the same question. What's really going on with Hamilton's Ferrari? If you're watching this and you care about what truly separates race-winning speed from midfield struggle, this is the moment to hit like, drop your thoughts in the comments, and subscribe for more deep dives into Formula One analysis and engineering truth. What Rosberg saw wasn't just a bad lap, it was a warning. This moment wasn't about drama for the cameras, it was about data, real, raw numbers. And those numbers showed something worrying. Lewis Hamilton, a seven-time world champion, was wrestling a Ferrari that refused to cooperate, not just once, not just in one corner, but over and over again, lap after lap. The onboard footage showed his steering corrections stacking up fast left, right, left again. The car wasn't flowing. It was fighting him. That's when Rosberg leaned closer to the telemetry stream and spotted what the cameras couldn't. Unusual brake temperature spikes, odd throttle hesitation, and yaw rates that didn't match Hamilton's inputs. Something was wrong beneath the surface. This wasn't about one bad setup or one poor lap. This was structural. And now, the F1 world had to pay attention. Rosberg's quiet statement echoed through the paddock, but to really understand the weight behind it, you need the full picture. Lewis Hamilton's move to Ferrari wasn't just a transfer. It was one of the biggest stories in recent Formula One history. After years with Mercedes, he joined the Scuderia, chasing a fresh challenge, new motivation, and maybe, just maybe, one more title. But the dream start didn't happen. From the very first races of the season, Hamilton struggled to extract pace from the car. Even as other teams brought consistent upgrades, Ferrari's much-hyped F1 upgrade package didn't seem to solve the core problems. Fans hoped for speed, but instead they saw confusion, grip issues, unpredictable handling, and inconsistent results that didn't match the car's wind tunnel promise. That's what makes Rosberg's reaction so important. He's not just a commentator throwing opinions from the sidelines, He's a former world champion who's fought for pole positions, survived title battles, and understands the language of telemetry better than most. His insight into high-performance motorsport engineering goes far beyond what most people see on TV. So when he leans in and calls something a structural issue, the paddock listens. And this time, he was pointing to something deeper than just driver error or setup tweaks. He was warning that Hamilton's problems in the Ferrari weren't just about comfort. They might be baked into the car itself. That's where the data comes in. Because in Formula One, opinions can be debated, but telemetry doesn't lie. The advanced telemetry analysis Rosberg studied showed a pattern that every engineer fears. On corner entry, Hamilton was dealing with sharp spikes in rear instability. The car's rear wasn't planted. It shifted, twitched, and broke loose at the worst moments. His throttle traces revealed hesitation not from uncertainty, but from pure necessity. He couldn't commit to the power because the car simply wouldn't hold the line. Every time he pressed the pedal, the rear end gave him a new surprise. Even his braking data raised alarms, split-second fluctuations where there should have been smooth pressure. It was as if Hamilton was constantly negotiating with the car instead of commanding it, and the root of it may lie beneath the bodywork, deep in the design philosophy of this year's Ferrari. Like every team under the ground effect F1 era, Ferrari relies on air flowing tightly beneath the car to create downforce. But their floor concept, which some insiders nickname the boomerang, seems to be incredibly sensitive. It works beautifully in clean conditions, but throw in a bump, a crosswind, or a tiny change in ride height, and the grip suddenly vanishes. That's what Hamilton is feeling. One lap, the rear sticks like glue. The next, it floats wide without warning. 
From the outside, it might look like he's driving. But the truth is, he's correcting. Constantly. His hands are never still. Steering wheel inputs come rapid fire. Left, right, tiny flicks, and sudden saves. In slow motion, it looks like he's fighting a wild animal, not piloting a precision machine. And Rosberg saw it all, live, in real time. That's when the real concern began to spread. As Rosberg's comments spread like wildfire online, the mood inside the Ferrari garage shifted instantly. What was already a difficult weekend suddenly turned into a full-blown crisis. Engineers who had spent months fine-tuning this year's Ferrari F1 upgrade package now found themselves questioning everything. Screens lit up with data replays, tyre temperature graphs, brake pressure logs. Anything that could explain why one of the world's greatest drivers looked like he was struggling just to stay on the track. The first red flag came from the tyre sensors. Rear tyre temperatures were spiking much faster than expected, sometimes after just a single push lap. Heat was building too quickly and not dispersing evenly, which killed grip almost instantly. Then came brake balance data. Small imbalances showed up in the charts, just enough to unsettle the car at corner entry, especially under heavy load. It wasn't major, but in Formula One, even a small detail like that can cost precious tenths. And then there was the rear suspension. Some of the newer, lightweight materials used to save weight appeared to be flexing under stress. Nothing illegal or broken, but just enough give to cause unpredictable shifts mid-corner especially when combined with the sensitive floor design. The Ferrari upgrade package, which was supposed to bring stability and pace, now looked like it might be the very thing creating chaos. Nobody said it out loud, but you could feel it in the paddock. This wasn't a setup issue. This was something deeper, something structural, just like Rosberg had warned. And now the pressure was mounting fast. Back on air, Rosberg wasn't done. As the broadcast returned to the paddock, he stood by a monitor showing Hamilton's full lap replay, telemetry overlay active, speed trace glowing red where things went wrong. He pointed to one corner after another, highlighting the time loss in slow motion. There, look. He's fighting the car mid-corner. That's not a mistake. That's a system not giving feedback. You can't win a championship like this, he said, with a quiet certainty that only a former world champion could deliver. His voice wasn't mocking. It was sympathetic. He's been there before. Rosberg knows better than anyone what a difficult car can do to a driver mentally. On the surface, Hamilton was calm. He always is. But the subtle signs were there. A longer pause before answering questions. The slower walk back to the garage. The tight jaw behind the visor. It wasn't anger, but something heavier. Frustration from knowing the talent is there, but the machine won't listen. And in that moment... Rosberg wasn't just analysing data. He was reading a fellow driver's emotions, drawing from his own battles with the unpredictable Mercedes during his title run. That kind of pressure doesn't always explode. Sometimes it just simmers quietly, and Rosberg could see it bubbling just beneath the surface. As Rosberg's analysis spread across social media, the real storm was building behind the garage doors. Inside Ferrari's hospitality unit, a quiet but intense debate had already begun. Some senior engineers argued they needed to pull the emergency brake, scrap the current upgrade package, and switch back to the older spec car, the one that felt more stable, even if it was slightly slower. Others pushed back, saying the new setup still had raw speed hidden inside it, if they could just unlock the right window. It became a classic Formula One debate, speed versus stability. What good is top-end pace if the driver can't trust the car through a single corner? The meeting rooms filled with tension. Eyes glanced at lap time comparisons, grip maps and driver feedback logs. Every decision felt heavier because Ferrari had been here before. Fans still remember 2018, when a risky floor upgrade after the French Grand Prix started a slow spiral that cost them the title. And again in 2020, a bold engine concept led to an entire year of disappointment. Everyone at Ferrari knew one wrong move now could write off another season before summer had even begun. And with a driver like Lewis Hamilton behind the wheel, those risks feel even greater. Give him the right car and he can chase down anyone. Give him the wrong one 
and its only frustration and lost weekends. With no clear answer from the debate room, Hamilton took matters into his own hands. That same night, long after the track had gone quiet and the lights inside most garages were out, he headed to Ferrari's simulator facility with reserve driver Antonio Fuoco. The goal was simple. Find something, anything, that made the car feel more predictable. Together, they ran through setup after setup, testing changes to ride height, adjusting damper stiffness, playing with anti-roll bar settings, trying to soften the rear just enough to regain control without sacrificing too much pace. Engineers surrounded the screens, flipping through layer after layer of Formula One technical breakdown charts, searching for that one pattern that might explain the instability. They looked at load transfers in corner entry, tyre temperature spread across the rear axle, and the airflow consistency through the underfloor. Every graph told part of the story, but the bigger picture remained frustratingly unclear. Still, Hamilton didn't flinch. He sat there, lap after virtual lap, taking notes, sharing his feel, comparing it with Fuoco's data, and pushing the team forward. For him, this wasn't just a bad race weekend. It was a puzzle he refused to leave unsolved. As the simulator screens dimmed and the night rolled into morning, the weight of the bigger picture started to settle in. This wasn't just about fixing one bad weekend, it was about what the rest of the season could become. Red Bull looked clean and consistent, barely putting a foot wrong. Mercedes too had started finding their rhythm again, quietly closing the gap with each race. In a championship this tight, where tenths of a second separate front rows from midfield, every race becomes a pressure cooker. And for Ferrari, still struggling to control a car that refuses to behave lap after lap, the clock is ticking fast. If this performance deficit isn't solved soon, Hamilton risks watching another season slip through his fingers. After everything he gave up to join Ferrari, that kind of repeat disappointment would sting more than any slide or spin ever could. Back on the broadcast, Rosberg offered one final simple line that cut through the noise. Fix the platform or watch the title fade. No drama, just the truth from someone who's lived both sides of the garage wall. For fans watching, the question now lingers. Was Rosberg right? Is the Ferrari concept flawed at its core or is Hamilton still finding his rhythm with a completely new machine? Let us know what you think. Was Monaco just a rough patch or a sign of deeper trouble ahead? Drop a comment, like the video if you're enjoying these insights, and don't forget to subscribe for more deep dives into Formula One's technical battles, championship pressure, and behind-the-scenes drama.